Hello Abacus user. Welcome to Abacus Acumen for quick and sound learning. Today's session will be on a steady state dynamics. So we are going to uh, touch base with steady state dynamics and the the session before this this is our second lesson so first lesson we done on the model analysis how to extract the model frequency of part or component so we strongly recommend you to go through our first video on the frequency extraction so we'll get more understanding how dynamics work what different components are there uh, so today's session will be on steady state dynamics so just quickly touch base with fundamentals so in this particular uh, session we are going to model a resonance so mm, in steady state uh, dynamics we'll model a resonance so a similar uh, resonance we try to model here so the frequency and loading frequency and uh, excitation frequency match so we are going to solve this problem in frequency domain so we'll have a load which will allow to go through frequency domain and we'll we'll plot the structural response so uh, as mentioned earlier whenever the loading and unloading frequency match you get a resonance so that's what exactly what uh, uh, we got is a resonance condition here and uh, when loading frequency and uh, natural frequency tend towards one we get nothing but a static response so this is nothing but a uh, your static response sorry k by f and when loading frequency and natural frequency are far away from uh, one trending towards more than two then your response is not mm, if i i take this response this is much lower compared to whatever x1 so if i take x1 my response here will be much much lower compared to x1 so we are going to model this now very specifically in this particular problem we also get a anti resonant so anti resonant is uh, when the resonance condition happen so during uh, uh, along the loading direction you get a displacement and then suddenly a displacement go in the other direction negative direction so this is nothing but whatever we have is a anti uh, resonant so we'll we'll do this modeling i think will you'll get a lot of learning out of this how to model this and you can solve a lot of lot of uh, example so getting into fundamentals um, we are going to apply a force this force is external force and this force will be having harmonic motion so the load up and down if you plot on a circular circular uh, profile you will get a harmonic motion so this is exactly what we are going to model so we are going to solve the basic equation is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to force and we'll have damping component we'll have mass component and then we'll have a structural stiffness and since in during the resonance the displacement will be far high so the you get lot of lot of inertia component and you can see the, you can plot all those things so the example which we are going to take is the same example is a i section so this is 1000 mm i section the length is uh, we are going to use 10 newton millimeter second uh, so these are the density young's modulus poisson's ratio and the profile is uh, depth is this is 100 millimeter and width is 50 50 millimeter so we're going to model this so let's let's quickly uh, model the example and then then you'll get a good learning out of this let's first uh, model it so we'll, we're going to model shell and then extrusion approximate size 200 is fine for me so i'll put 0 comma 0 and then i get uh, 50, 0 comma 50 0 comma minus 0 comma minus 50 so 
we got a two point I just put a depth there so let me connect the depth and then we'll have this this way we'll have this one so I'm just uh, drawing a flange we'll quickly check dimension so this is 50 fine so total depth is 100 so I just take it for center point then we'll check what is this 25 fine uh, this is also 25 that is exactly what we want this is also 25 25 perfect and then so we have perfect structure so let's extract it do a extrusion of 1000 so we are quickly able to build a component so we have component we are going to give vertical load and we are going to understand what is the resonant frequency and what particular frequency the component is going to resonate and what are the displacement so we'll put a property here right now we'll put steel uh, we'll put a density of this 7.e e5 minus 09 this is turn per millimeter cube we are going to use si unit and uh, modulus is 10 e power 03 mpa and poisons ratio is 0.3 so we done with uh, metal property definition will give a section so the thickness is a 5 millimeter so this is a 5 millimeter thick component uh, we are going to assign it to this section to this so we are we are assigned the thickness now the next thing is we'll do assembly so we'll go sequence bar we'll create assembly for this part then we'll create a step so now the first first condition is we will we'll first understand the, the modal frequency of this once you understand the modal frequency then then we'll apply the load so I'm going to first create the number one prerequisite for the getting a steady state dynamics is you should have a first as a frequency uh, step so this is first you need to extract the frequency so first extract the frequency so I'm going to extract the first five mode uh, this will be the one end will be fixed so I'm going to uh, put a constraint on the one side it will be end caster condition here so this is a cantilever beam I section so we are going to first put boundary condition on one end So we put an end caster condition and then we'll just quickly mesh it. So mesh you cannot do in dependent component, you have to go to the part component and then we are going to select middle axis full cord so we can get a good quality mesh and then we are going to put we are going to see with five so uh, we'll have at least 7.5 that way so uh, you can have fine mesh to capture the deformation mode but it should not be so fine that it take a lot of time so we are doing a quick problem so I'm just uh, 
doing this with course mesh so we have already selected s for r now we'll quickly mesh it so we done the component and then then we'll will create first as a frequency so first is I will will do model analysis let me do a data check so once we done the model analysis we'll get idea how much is a what different frequency are there and then we'll apply the load and then we'll do a steady state dynamics so preprocessor are done there is no issue so we'll submit the run so we'll submit and get first hand information on what different modes we got so we are done it so let's check the result so let me first we i'm just uh, increasing the legend size so let's understand first frequency is 29. Point 25 let's see what is a mode shape related to this frequency this is a lateral bending so if you see it is bending in lateral direction so this is a lateral bending because lateral direction it doesn't have stiffness so the first frequency you get under root k by m you have lateral frequency then then you have second one which is a twisting so this is a torsional mode third one is a bending so this is this is a dangerous frequency because our load is on the the uh, cantilever load in negative y direction so it's going to get the beam bending so this is this probably is our 115 will be the the resonant frequency or the most dangerous fre frequency for our loading this is again a second lateral and then then we have a twisting so mm, let's now uh, do a setup for second step so we are now the first thing once you do a steady state dynamics you have to first get a frequency then do a frequency analysis understand what are the different frequency mode then you start applying the load and then go through a steady state dynamics so we'll create second step steady state dynamics this will be linear protrusion so in steady state dynamics you have direct modal and subspace so the three different options you have direct if you select then you don't have to do a frequency response so in direct it will do frequency response so we are going to select the modal steady state dynamics model so we'll continue this uh, we are going to say from one frequency we are seeing actually the frequency was like till our last frequency the first five frequency was a 250 so fifth frequency was 250 we uh, we are interested in the first five modes so we are looking into how it is going to respond so i am interested from lower frequency 1 hertz to 250 hertz and then number of 0.3 bias 3 logarithm i'm going to do I'm going to put a structural damping here from first mode to fifth mode and the structural damping is five percent so in the world the the, the structural damping is maximum is a uh, five percent so if you want to have other uh, damping you can add uh, add relays damping composite damping you can add it we, we right now we are just looking into what is structural damping so there is no external damper in this this uh, this component you have cantilever beam subjected to load and we the damping is structural damping five percent so we are done that i will just apply the load so we are going to apply concentrated load So I'm going to apply here. Done. I'm 
I'm going to apply minus thousand. So this is the uh, load we are going to uh, apply. We are not going to apply the the complex part. We are going to apply the real part. So the load we applied now. Let me save this as steady state dynamics, and then then we'll quickly run it, and then we'll see. So we have two steps. One is frequency, and the other is steady state dynamics. So we'll do a data check, and then we'll quickly run it. Just submitted for we'll submit it now. So the procedure is we should have first frequency steps, then you have steady state dynamics. So we submitted. We'll quickly monitor how it's going. So it's just going to pre processor. Pre processor done. So it's almost done. So let's plot um, uh, the displacement over a period of frequency. So you go to tool, create data, you create it. Uh, but before that, we need to put it on the displacement. We'll look for different. So we'll see how how over a period of frequency how this displacement changes. So we'll plot vertical. So I'm going to plot x y plot. Go to ODB field output. So we'll see what variable we have. We'll go to unique nodal and then we'll get take a displacement. So we'll take a displacement and then we'll select a second set where we apply the load. And the active step is we are going to take a steady state dynamics. And then we'll plot it. So this is what response you got. So let me put this. Uh, so we have displacement and we have frequency. So let me uh, increase the font size here. We'll increase the font size and see how it how it looks. So you get a very high displacement near to 120, 115 frequency and then you have anti-resonant condition. So displacement also. Let's let's make it. So we'll just increase the count here. And here also I'll increase the count. So there's something happening here. So let's uh, uh, let's Let's plot this. So I'm going to take this. Uh, first, we'll analyze this. How, how exactly this is happening? So let's let's analyze this. And so I'll just plot this here, and then we'll get it. Let's 
this is your this is what we plotted is y displacement so we'll also plot a magnitude so let let's consider first plotting magnitude also so again create continue and then we'll take we'll take magnitude we'll select z2 and then we'll plot it so this is what we have plotted a magnitude so let's 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 see the magnitude also so during resonance it is going to this loading is even though one direction but it may get overall displacement mm -hmm. so there is no sign so it is same thing it's a y direction you are converted into a magnitude so there is no sign so we 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 can see now this is what exactly what we are done so some this is our resonant frequency so this is this is our resonant frequency it is somewhere near to that 115 hertz this is when we trend towards zero so so if i tend towards zero omega by omega n my displacement is somewhere around 0.09 and when during the resonance condition it is 9 so this is 10 times higher so if loading and loading and natural frequency match you will get this resonance and then you get this suddenly coming down is because of sign change and this is this is nothing but your you get anti resonant condition and then if you response you see somewhere here it is something like a 0.5 now now let's say now let's let's go back and check uh now let's go back and check uh we'll see the frequency why we didn't got uh, uh specifically uh, when actually our first frequency was first frequency was lateral so our load is not giving lateral displacement so we doesn't get a uh, resonant during this this frequency which is a 29 then our second frequency was 75 which was a torsional frequency our load is not giving torsional displacement so it was not issue third frequency was really matching with what our load gives so our load also give a vertical displacement and this is exactly a, a resonant frequency for current problem if our load was in lateral direction we could have got a lateral uh, resonant corresponding to that so we could have got the the resonant during the 29.25 frequency and then then we have this other mode which is also not not uh, and then then the last one is torsional so this is what exactly we do so we can uh, that is what exactly we see we doesn't see anything in this range then we specifically see in the this range now i mentioned even my earlier video and at the start of this presentation that when it trend towards zero this is nothing but your static response so just not to waste everybody's time i just done a static analysis for this which give a displacement of 0.99 millimeter so if you see here it is nothing but your 0.99 so this is this is your static response so this is exactly is your static response and then your your applied frequency is loading frequency is far higher than 2 or 3 then you can just do a static analysis and say okay your component is safe for the dynamic analysis so this is a brief uh, on today's session so just to summarize um first you have to do a frequency analysis get a frequency analysis and get a number of modes second thing in steady state dynamics you put a damping structural damping if you doesn't put damping this will go infinite so we'll 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 do one more problem next problem where we'll not give a damping and we'll see how the the response get infinite 
third thing you can have in this case there was a five frequency but the f the, the the mode shape the frequency which have similar def deformation to a applied load which will give a resonance condition so the mode shape is also very important for you to understand how the the resonance happen so if you see in the first mode was a lateral mode second was a torque twisting mode which was not giving a resonance so you see in this region the 29 region you don't see the the resonance 75 region you don't see a resonance you see a uh, amplification but not that high we have a torsional but this have some 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 bending component then at 115 you get a resonance because you have that uh, the frequency and uh, the mode shape similar to the applied load and that's where you get uh, the resonance so thanks a lot guys uh, for watching my video and uh, uh, I thank you for watching this video also if you like this uh, video and channel don't forget to like us and subscribe us thank you bye bye